everybody. So today we're going to be learning about section 7.1, which is introduction to air pollution. And air pollution is sometimes just commonly referred to as pollutants. So the learning objective for today is that you can identify the sources and effects of air pollutants. Some of the essential knowledge that you're going to gain is how coal combustion and other fossil fuel combustions release different pollutants into the atmosphere, the way that air quality is impacted by these, how the Clean Air Act and the EPA work together to regulate these pollutants, and then the difference between primary and secondary pollutants. So one of the things that it's really important for you to be aware of, especially when it comes to the AP tests and writing FRQs, is that you need to be very specific about the difference between air pollutants and air pollution. On the AP test for FRQs, do not just write pollution. Pollution is kind of more of like an idea of like polluting the environment. Air pollutants are referring to specific molecules and particles. So make sure that you are always saying air pollutants, not just pollution. And the Clean Air Act, which was passed in 1970, identifies six pollutants that the EPA is required to set acceptable limits for to monitor and enforce. So these are going to be the six pollutants that we're going to focus on, but also specifically you can reference on an FRQ. So the first one is going to be sulfur dioxide. And sulfur dioxide is, it occurs from coal combustion, which as we've learned with our last unit, coal combustion occurs when we make electricity. Some of the problems that it can cause is respiratory irritation, it creates smog, and it can also create acid rain. Now, something to be aware of when we say acid rain, typically we think of it in the form of precipitation in the form of rain, but just be aware that any precipitation also is included in this. So sulfur dioxide can contribute to acid snow, acid fog, and acid rain. So I'm just gonna use acid rain because I feel like it's easier, but just be aware that when I say acid rain, it kind of encapsulates all acid precipitation. So the next one is gonna be nitrous oxides, which we sometimes refer to as NOx. Um, and that's just because there's two types of nitrogen oxides. One is nitrogen monoxide, and then we have nitrogen dioxide. And these are gonna be released from all fossil fuel combustion, especially gas. And what it does is it results in the formation of ozone, photochemical smog, which we'll learn about more in our next set of notes, and then again, acid rain. Then we have carbon monoxide. This occurs during incomplete combustion of basically any combustion type reaction. It can also lead to ozone, and then it is also lethal to humans. Additionally, we have lead, which the chemical formula for that, or the letters that we use on the periodic table is PB. And lead is going to occur from metal plants and waste incineration. And lead is especially dangerous because it's a neurotoxin. So it can cause damage to your brain and your entire nervous system. Then we have ozone, which is tropospheric. So it's going to be occurring in the tropospheric level. And ozone is a problem because it is a photochemical oxidation of nitrogen dioxide. And we'll talk a little bit more about photochemical stuff in future notes. It also causes respiratory irritation, creates smog, and can be damaging to plants. And then the last one is going to be particulate matter. This occurs from any type of fossil fuel or biomass combustion, and it can lead to respiratory irritation and creating smog. Now, one of the things that you may or may not have noticed is the fact that carbon dioxide is not one of those six criteria pollutants in the Clean Air Act. Now, technically in 2007, the Supreme Court ruled that the EPA could regulate greenhouse gases and it began doing so in 2009, but it's not a pollutant. So this is an important thing to be aware of, especially when you are doing FRQs. Carbon dioxide does not count as a pollutant. It is a greenhouse gas, but it's not a pollutant. And that's because carbon dioxide does not directly lower air quality from a human health standpoint. It's not toxic for organisms to breathe. It's not damaging to lungs and eyes. It does not lead to smog or decreased visibility. Thanks to cellular respiration, we have a lot of carbon dioxide naturally occurring 
in our atmosphere. And it definitely leads to an increase. It's a greenhouse gas, so it can lead to global warming, but it does not directly lower the quality of human health. So it is not considered one of those six pollutants. So as I said, it's a greenhouse gas. It does lead to earth warming and the climate change and earth warming can have environmental and human health consequences, which is why the Supreme Court said that the EPA could regulate it, but it is not a pollutant. So when you are doing FRQs, Carbon dioxide has never been included on FRQ scoring guidelines when you are asked to name an air pollutant. So do not put carbon dioxide as a pollutant on any of your FRQs. You should just stick to our definitive six ones that we know about when you are going to be talking about FRQs. Because if you put carbon dioxide, it's a greenhouse gas. They won't count it as a pollutant. Now we're going to look at coal combustion, which we learned a good amount about this in unit six. So hopefully this is somewhat familiar sounding. Now core, coal combustion is gonna be a problem because it releases more air pollutants than any of our other fossil fuels. And it makes up about 35% of our global electricity, which means we're releasing a lot of air pollutants from it. So all the things that coal combustion can release, it releases carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, which is not an air pollutant, but it's a greenhouse gas. We've got sulfur dioxide and then the NOx, so the nitrous oxide and nitrous dioxide. It also releases toxic metals like mercury and arsenic and lead and then particulate matter, which often has toxic metals in it. So some of the impacts specifically of sulfur dioxide, because coal is really high in sulfur content, so that's gonna be one that it's really putting out there when it, we have it being combusted. And sulfur dioxide is dangerous because it leads to respiratory irritants. So it can inflame basically your entire respiratory system, like your lungs or the little bronchioles, and it can worsen asthma and bronchitis. Also sulfur aerosols, which are suspended sulfate particulates, can block incoming sun, which is going to reduce visibility and be a problem for those that do photosynthesis. It also forms sulfurous smog, which is also known as gray smog. Um, and then additionally, it can combine with water and oxygen in the atmosphere to form sulfuric acid. And sulfuric acid is going to come down when we have acid rain. So because coal combustion is high in sulfur, this is why sulfur dioxide is going to be one of the big ones that comes from coal combustion from an air pollution standpoint. But it also releases all the other ones that I mentioned. So that would be the top of a smelter when you are having coal combustion. So all that loveliness is going into the air. Now we're going to talk about nitrogen oxides, which sometimes I refer to as NOx just for short. But remember, NOx can either be nitrous oxide or nitrous dioxide. And this is going to be released by the combustion of basically anything, especially fossil fuels and biomass. So when we are looking at both nitrogen, nitrous oxide and nitrogen dioxide, you are going to have the nitrous oxide forming when nitrogen gas combines with oxygen gas, especially during combustion. Now this can end up becoming nitrogen dioxide when it reacts with ozone or more of the oxygen gas. And then sunlight also converts nitrogen dioxide back into nitrous oxide. And so we are going to get this reaction here with the nitrogen gas and then the oxygen gas are creating nitric oxide. And then that nitric oxide can react with oxygen to form more. So if we're getting the nitric oxide, then just be aware that nitrogen dioxide is going to also be a byproduct. So when we get one, we're probably gonna be seeing both of them being created in the atmosphere, kind of swapping as they're reacting with sunlight and oxygen. Now the environmental and human health impacts, um, you might notice that respiratory irritation is a very common one. So fun fact, if you're ever asked for a human health impact from air pollution and you aren't sure, a solid guess would be respiratory irritant because basically all of them are respiratory irritants. So if you don't actually know, just go with that one and there's a pretty good chance you're going to be right. 
Now, another thing that it does is it leads to tro tropospheric, remember the um, troposphere layer in the Earth's atmosphere? So it's going to lead to ozone formation there, which is going to lead to photochemical smog, which we'll talk about in future units. And then also it can combine with water and oxygen to form nitric acid, which also can lead to acid rain. So just like we're seeing sulfur dioxide able to interact with water and oxygen to make sulfuric acid for acid rain, we're seeing a similar process happening here with the creation of nitric acid. Now, how is the EPA involved in this? The EPA is the Environmental Protection Agency, which is kind of in the United States, the head agency that's in charge of regulating air pollutants. Now, I mentioned that we had the Clean Air Act passed and the Clean Air Act, it's an important piece of legislation that you need to be aware of, especially when talking about air pollutants. But before this Clean Air Act was passed, lead was actually a very common gasoline additive and the EPA stepped in and began phasing out lead from gasoline in 1974, which is why now when you look at gasoline, a lot of times it'll say unleaded. That means there isn't lead in it because in the 70s and before there did used to be, which obviously is a problem because it can impact our nervous system and it's bad. So we don't want that in our gasoline and then being emitted more into the environment. So the EPA has actually made some regulations when it comes to cars, not only for gasoline and not having lead as part of it, but in 1974, they also required cars to have what are called catalytic converters. And catalytic converters help to reduce the NOx and carbon monoxide and hydrocarbon emissions. And additionally, lead damages catalytic converters. So in addition to phasing out lead from gasoline, they also required cars to have something in it that is going to do badly when there's lead. So it's just mounting reason why gasoline companies had to take lead out of their gasoline. And if you look here, um, this is why the EPA and the Clean Air Act, the work that they do is important. Because if you look at the levels from 1980 to 2019, the amount of lead over here is when we just kind of started having those regulations occurring. And you're looking that over time, the amount of lead that is in our air has drastically decreased. And that's a lot of because of the Clean Air Act and these EPA legislations that have gone to make it so that we don't have lead in gasoline. And so even at the beginning of the 90s and late 80s, you can see kind of higher amounts just from what was left over from the lead from gasoline in the atmosphere. And over time, it is decreasing, which is very good for our health. So now we're going to talk about primary versus secondary air pollutants. Primary air pollutants are going to be ones that are emitted directly from sources, such as vehicles, power plants, factories, or natural sources, such as volcanoes and forest fires. Um, and these are going to be our NOx, carbon monoxide, VOX, the sulfur dioxide, particulate matter, hydrocarbons, all of those are going to be examples of primary air pollutants. And then secondary air pollutants are going to be ones that were primary pollutants that have been transformed in the presence of sunlight, water, or oxygen, which is when it gets into the air, this is when we start having the secondary ones created. Now this is going to have, the secondary air pollutants are going to occur more during the day because sunlight often drives their formation. And some examples are going to be tropospheric ozone, sulfuric acid, sulfate, nitric acid, and nitrate. And all of these are going to be coming from the original primary ones. So here's going to be your practice FRQ for 7.1, where you're going to be practicing the suggested skill of explaining modifications to an experimental procedure that will alter results. So for this practice FRQ, consider this scenario. EPA scientists performed an experiment where coal was burned in different chambers at varying temperatures to see how temperature impacts the amount of NOx produced by coal combustion. So what I want you to do for this practice FRQ is to explain how the results of the study would be expected to change if the same experiment were repeated with natural gas. So up here in the corner, I have a diagram of NOx formation 
versus um, the amount of temperature, so the combustion. These aren't necessarily the exact results that they would get from this experiment, but it does show you the correlation. So you're gonna have to go back to some of your knowledge from our last unit with what you know about natural gas in order to answer this one. So it's kind of tying some stuff together here, but again, explain how the results of the study would be expected to change if the same experiment were repeated with natural gas. And that's gonna be your practice FRQ for 7.1. And those were your notes on 7.1 about introduction to air pollutants.